Good evening. I wrap Stain of Linden Associates with your metal market wrap up for this Tuesday. And we are now, it's so unusual, Tuesday, not Monday, but it is Tuesday and it is the 1st of June, 2021, about 620 p.m. Central Time. So as you can see, backing off in the gold again, silver had a big spike up today, giving back a chunk of that. And in fact, if you take a look while you're down right now in all the stock indices, when you woke up this morning, the Dow was up 200 points, everything was roaring until the ISM data came out. Um, actually, it wasn't ISM, it was supply management data that came out. And on that report, it showed the backups. Then we got the Dallas Fed, and you could see all the backups there, the big drops in their numbers. And that's going on because of supply shortages and worker shortages. As I've given you my idea on that, that isn't going to really change all that much until September when these federal subsidies to pay people not to work end. And right now, that's where we're at. We're paying people not to work. But if you look around you, most of the pandemic news is very, very positive in the United States. Even Brazil doing better. India, they have peaked at this point. Now, they can peak again, you know, they can go through that, but they're in a downturn. Uh, so that's very interesting, all right? So let's take a look and see what we've got on the gold. As you can see in the gold, you're staying over that 18-week moving average of closes at 1787.30, and you've basically been doing that for a long time now the market bit of distribution going on here but a new high up to 1920 what else you've kept this pattern of higher lows higher highs bullishness when you put the moving averages on i think you'd agree i pointed out to you last week on thursday and uh let's see friday i didn't do an update for you over the weekend I took the time off, but I'm going to be doing them on the weekends now as we catch up until I go away for a couple of vacations in the summer. But look for me to be back and helping you on those. My paid subscribers, they got everything right on time as I always do it. Um, you had your bullish crossover take place on Friday, and today to make a new high, no surprise. Now, was that it for the near term? That becomes the question. Will you fall back to try to challenge wherever that 18-day average comes in? I wouldn't want to see that. I'd like the market to get that average back up above 1884.30, so this move continues to the upside, given how bullish it looks on the charts. You have not hit an upper Bollinger Band since back about two weeks ago. That becomes the resistance at 1929.70. As long as you don't take out 1884.30, I think the trend stays. Where are you in stochastics? So, in the slow stochastics, you're embedded. Now, if you take a look, you can see you've got numbers that are just going sideways over 80. Until the red line closes under 79, I am expecting the pros to be buyers on this. And I would expect them to come in on these lows if they can, as long as you don't take out the prior day's high and keep driving the market towards a new high. Lose that 79 reading, and I think they bail, and then the market has a different issue. In the gold-silver ratio, even with the rally today in silver, you didn't get back under this key number. No, I'm not in love with it. I'm going to have to get rid of the June gold here. I can keep it a little bit because while you're not trading it, it's still what the trade looks at on that spread. Uh, the July silver is the right silver to still be in. And as you can see, the market peaked out today. Now, I want to come back to this. This is Thursday. So this is, how, this is Friday. I take that back. Here's Thursday trying it up, and then you have a big outside day up. So if it's going to follow through, I have no way to know that, the upper Bollinger Band becomes the resistance target. And what do you do the first time you hit it? If you take my charting course, you know. And I don't pitch it all the time, and I'm not going to pitch it aggressively going forward. I'll mention it every now and then, and that's it. I had one subscriber that got mad at me for doing that. The point is, it's got so much data, and it's how you use these Bollinger Bands when you tie it in with stochastics and the like. So he may not like it. I love it, and it's proven for me to be right there with my top ten things, probably in the top three, maybe the top one. Um, lower high, higher low, not a trend, up to the band. I would expect support 27.79 in this market. 
I uh, did a piece today for Bloomberg as we were uh, doing things on TikTok, and it was about copper. I'd been asked to do a piece there. I am still of the opinion that the copper has a ways to go on the upside. Until I see something different on charts, no. Why do I say that? Because you've got supply shortages. You can't bring the copper back on quickly at all. Uh, today's Tuesday. Yesterday, Memorial Day, I was on Bloomberg TV in Canada. You remember, they, they're not part of our holiday here. And to make a long story short, they had asked me about the copper. And I said, I can see $5 a, a, a pound coming on it. Easy, real easy. I said, you're going to get more demand out of China in time. And then all of Europe's coming back online and the U.S. is back. And once we get the right amount of workers, instead of these delays in the supply chain, they're going to want more of everything. And that's why I still think the demand cycle is there. But I'm a chartist. As a chartist, the trend is up. But this well supports at 460, 430. The risk factor would be under 449. That's way too much money to risk. Let the chart develop a tighter range to trade off of would be my advice. In the platinum market, you can see that you've got higher lows and higher highs, but you're staying underneath the 18-day average. Momentum is hanging in here, still in oversold territory. There's no reason to be short, no reason to be long. Palladium market, right up to the resistance of the 18-day average, and that's what I teach. Markets often go back to a neutral area, which I consider that 18-day average on a daily chart to be, and it tries to figure out from there where to go. It hasn't done that yet. A close over 28.58 might give the market reason to start developing the bullishness, so I'll be looking to see if that happens. The dollar index caught between lower Bollinger Bands, rallies back to that resistance zone, that line in the sand, falls back from it, but not a trend, and oversold. I don't see anything there. And Ethereum is still in the bear camp, but too oversold. It refuses to embed. Okay, I can see the trend down, the bias down, but oversold is oversold. I talk about this and a lot more every morning, Monday, through Friday when there's not a holiday on a Monday morning, all right? I do take some holiday time off. And then we rock through it. I'm giving you ideas there, and the whole purpose of these morning videos is this. You have your own idea. You're thinking of doing something. Why not take a look at what I'm saying on charts, meant for the traders, where I'm saying I want you to buy here. Buy at the market. Put your order in here. Get out at the market. I did a bunch of those this morning for, uh, for traders. And you get to look at it either on an iPhone or an Android phone, your tablet, a PC computer. I cover the news of the day, and I'm doing this at 540 in the morning. So it's I've already got Asian news and Europe, and I'll cover that, and then the upcoming reports. I cover all the markets, as you can see. And when I say specific, I'm specific. I will show short-term charts. We'll call those the daily charts and weekly charts for those of you that like the longer-term trades. They're all there. $7.95 for the first 30 days, give it a try. All you need to do is go to our website under the word research, everything's explained and that's where you sign up. Have a good day. I'm debating with my team what to do with our what's up. Are we gonna do it this week or skip on holiday weeks and just uh, start again next week, maybe two of them next week. So I'll know a lot more in the morning. Take care.